Hello, welcome to the second video looking at the first derivative and how it affects the graph. Uh, what, what information can you get from the first derivative about the original function? In this video, we look at the first derivative test. Okay, here's how it works. The purpose of it is for us to be able to classify local maximum and local minimum values. In previous videos, we looked at how to classify absolute maximum and absolute minimum values, but we didn't really have a way to officially classify local maximum, local minimums. Well, this is one way. We'll find another way in the next video, but the first derivative test can tell you exactly that. Here's the deal. We got to know, first off, what our critical numbers are. Remember, those are places where your derivative is either equal to zero or undefined. So you start there. And then you want to be able to classify these critical numbers. These are the possible guys who could lead to local minimum or local maximum values for your function. Now, local just means a peak or a valley. It isn't absolute. It isn't the biggest that the function ever gets. How can you guarantee a peak or a valley? It's about how your function changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. And so if your derivative changes from positive to negative, that means your function changes from increasing to decreasing and it's those places where you have a local maximum I'm flipping that around if your function changes from decreasing to increasing then you'll see at those places you'll have a local minimum and so we'll have to analyze the signs on the first derivative to see how it's changing. We've got to mark off those places where it's equal to zero at. And then we have to identify, do you change sign? Because sometimes you can be equal to zero, but then never change sign. That would be the case here where we have a function who is increasing, hits a zero for its tangent line slope, and then continues on increasing. That's not a max. It wanted to be a max, but at the same time, it wanted to be a min. So this is not a max nor a min. This happens like the most famous one is y equals x cubed at the origin. But it could happen the other way, too. A function could be decreasing, have a zero tangent line, and go back to being decreasing again. So it's not a guarantee that you'll have a local max or local min where your derivative is equal to zero. You must check the signs. So let's go do that. Here's an example. We have the function f of x is equal to x to the fifth minus 5x cubed. Uh, I'm sorry, minus 5x plus 3. Our job, take the derivative, find the critical numbers. We'll take the derivative, set it equal to 0. And so it won't be that bad. It's a polynomial. It, there's no place where this derivative doesn't exist at. And so this derivative is just 5x fourth minus 5. We need to know where it's equal to 0 at. If you factor out the 5, you might have an easier time at it. You don't have to, though. And so then um, x to the fourth minus 1 factors as x squared plus 1 and x squared minus 1. It's a difference of squares. x squared plus 1 is never 0. It's a, it, it, where it's equal to 0 at is imaginary. We don't deal with imaginary numbers. And so x squared minus 1 could be 0. And you can even factor it further as x plus 1, x minus 1. Another difference of squares. The two places where your derivative is equal to 0 at are at these two x values, plus or minus 1. There's no place where you're undefined at. These are your critical numbers. Let's classify them. Local max, local min, maybe neither. It's all about the signs on the derivative. A good way to analyze the signs is to have a number line. And on that number line, you mark off these critical numbers. We're looking at the signs of the derivative, not the function, the derivative. So to emphasize that, I put a little f prime next to the number line. All right. And officially what you do is you pick test values in each of these different intervals. But um, you could outside the box kind of think your way through it. Five is always positive x squared plus 1 is always positive. So it's really about this x squared minus 1 who decides what the signs are. And that's a parabola who opens upward equal to 0 at plus or minus 1, positive 
when you're bigger than one and when you're smaller than negative one and negative in between. So we could outside the box, think our way through it, or we could pick test values. Well, look at that. At x equals negative one, we change sign. Our derivative does. It's positive, and then all of a sudden, it's negative, and in between, it's equal to zero. So when your function is, when your derivative is positive and then it's negative, that means you're going from increasing to decreasing, and such a point would be labeled as a local maximum that occurs at x equals negative 1. Negative 1 is not the local maximum, though, but it occurs there. And then look at the other critical number. You go from negative to positive on your first derivative. You go from decreasing function to, to increasing function. That's got to be a local minimum. We did it, first derivative test. It requires you to know the signs of your derivative though, which might be some trouble. If, if you need to, take some test values, plug a zero in. It'll be the same sign for all those guys in between. Plug something like negative 100 in or plug 100 in. Or you could backdoor it and think through like, what kind of signs could I possibly have? Who's really deciding the sign on my derivative? Okay, all right, great. Now we need the actual value. That's a y value. So we take that x, put it back into the function. So uh, negative one to the fifth is a negative one, but it's in plus a five, plus a three. So we end up with a seven. That is our local maximum. Local, not, not global, not absolute, our local. That's a little peak. That we reach a, a peak of seven when x is negative one. We reach a valley of um, when x is one, that, that some of those coefficients is a negative one. That's, that, that's the local minimum value of our function. Wow, that's great. Okay, one last thing. Uh, we can go back now to this graph here. And we can, uh, let me click through it quickly. We now know these places where the function was increasing and then it was decreasing. Now we're looking at the graph of the derivative, remember. And so, um, if your function changes from increasing to decreasing, we know then you have a local maximum value. And that's what's going on here at negative uh, at a half, at x equals a half. And then at x equals two, you're changing from decreasing to increasing. That's gotta be a local minimum of your function. Not, 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 not of your derivative, of your function. We're looking at a graph of the derivative. We're not looking for max and mins on that. The information that we get out of that leads to max and mins on the function. And that last one there, your derivative went from negative to positive. You went from above the x-axis to under the x-axis. That means that you went from decreasing, I'm sorry, increasing to decreasing. That's going to be a local min um, at that x value. We don't know what the actual value is because we don't know what the function is. But we can at least say that for sure this has three critical points, places where your derivative is equal to zero at. And now we know how to classify those critical points. All right, thank you for watching. I've been talking too much. Um, my name is Nakaya Rimmer. Um, please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Um, I'm happy to, happy to guide you through. Let me know what else you, you want to see videos on. Um, I'll see you in the next video.